rich, some big farm. It's huge, very green. They must have had lots of rain. It's pretty wet. There's lots of mud. In fact, avoid that. Don't worry, Karen. I'm a son of a legend. You just have to relax, Karen. Okay. What do you reckon? Uh, I don't think we should go any further. Trust me. Oh. Just it's... I will get us through this. I say no. Uh, look, I, I say think... no. No, I think that I can get us through on the left. I say no. Uh, I'm going now. Oh. Come on. Ah! Jesus! Now what? We're in the uh, middle of a paddy. <laughs> get out, Karen. I'm not getting out. Come on, I get it. I refuse to get out. Rich, I'm going to call for help. I think we need to call someone. Karen. I'm calling, I'm calling, I'm calling. <laughs> Miss Corrigan, hello. I'm so sorry, but we're in a spot of bother in the middle of the paddock. Can you bring a tractor? How embarrassing. It was Richard's fault. <laughs> Don't worry, Karen, you stay there. I'm staying put. So nice to meet you, Steph. Oh, it's nice to meet you too. <laughs> Let's avoid <laughs> let's avoid muddy ditches. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Here at Corrigan's, there's plenty. Oh, well, look, if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it well, Karen. That's yes, for sure. I can say that again. Yeah. Let's see if we can only have one bog for the day. Eh? <laughs> you parked me in more mud. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Hello, Karen. Richard. Karen, hey, welcome Darren. to Corrigan's. Thank you. Thank you so much. We've already had fiasco. <laughs> you could have come in the front gate. No, oh, look, I love a challenge. <laughs> no. <The front> gate. <laughs> so, Darren, how many varietals of greens do you grow here? Uh, several. We're probably the largest silverbeet growers in Australia. We sell millions of cods every year. My favourite. Rich loves silverbeet. Guys, do you want to go and have a look at the field? Yeah, I'd yes, please. To Dying to. On foot this time. <laughs> <laughs> So, Darren, apart from the rainbow chard, the kale and the baby kale, what else do you grow? Give Tuscan it to me. Tuscan cabbage, pak choy, celery, leeks. Celeriac? Celeriac, yep. Yes, as well. I love celeriac. Yeah. 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 I think celeriac's underrated. How do you um, control pests and weeds and, like, has your approach to farming changed recently? Yeah, we practice what's called IPM, Integrated Pest Management. We do a lot of cultivation. We're going back to the old school tractor work and small implements to get rid of the weeds so we don't have to use herbicides anymore. We're going back to what my father and grandfathers used to do. So you're, cu you're from a few generations of... At least five, yeah. Five generations? Yeah. It's fantastic! Yeah, the idea now is just to grow it as clean and as healthy as you possibly can. Yeah. Well, today I'm cooking a little con carne with turkey, turkey thigh, and I'm going to serve it with a, um, a slaw of your kale. Beautiful. Yeah. OK, and I'm going to do a slow-cooked lamb shoulder, and I'm going to serve that with some of your beautiful Swiss chard. Would you like me to get yourself? Well, I reckon so. <laughs> We're out in the paddock. Couldn't be fresher. <laughs> <laughs> the farmer himself. That's nice. That's awesome. Thank you. Well, shall we get cracking? We Let's need to get cooking. Let's go. Concarne. Talk to me. What's Talk going to you. On? Well, we're going to use some turkey in my concarne today. And it is a very lean meat. It's, it actually is quite delicious and takes on a lot of spices and flavours at the same time. So I love working with it. This recipe also works really well with chicken as well. But can you rip no. a few of stalks of celery of okay. Darren's? I'll take about, yep. Four. What do you reckon? Yep. Another one? Beautiful. And also That's some garlic and a chili. green chilli. Yep. And, mm. well, I'm busy chopping these up, Rich. What have you got there? I've got some spices, which are integral to a great con carne. Give it um, some guts. Yes. Um, cumin, coriander seed and fennel. OK. So if you could grind those. Beautiful. 
but not too fine. I still want to see a bit of the seed in the actual recipe. So if you were cooking in a more, I would say, FODMAP-friendly way, you could omit the garlic the and garlic. the onion. I think so, but I think it is different for everybody. Everybody's on their own little journey, but that is one of the pieces of advice that mm. I would give, yes. Is that enough? Is that going to be great yep, enough? Yep, that's yeah. great, Rich. Could you also just throw me a couple of bay leaves? Yep. Putting some oil into a wide base pan over some good strong heat. And we're just going to sauté the celery, garlic and chilli off. And I've got one onion. Mm. Bay leaf, throw bay leaf. them in. Next, we'll add mm. the spices. Mm, there we go. Nice there. And along with that, I've got some smoky paprika and also mm. a good dose of white pepper. Okay. Rich, could you pass me the turkey? Yeah. Steggles turkey thigh. Thank you. Around 800 grams, we bought the diced thigh. That's going straight into the pan now. along with some salt. It might seem like we're seasoning this quite a bit, but there's a lot going on in there. And it needs to just really bring all those flavours together, like just cooking it through. So along with the turkey and the spices, Rich, I'm going to add some sugar. Okay. Now you could use an alternative sweetener. You could. You could, um, yeah. or omit it all together, but I am trying to make all of those spices sort of play together nicely. Because <laughs> the opposite to the sugar is some vinegar. I've got some apple cider vinegar, that's going in as well, and that's just going to lift or sharpen the flavours up. Next, in with some tomato paste, along with a tin of Ardmona crushed tomatoes. Love Ardmona crushed tomatoes. And then for my secret ingredient, some cocoa powder. And what does that do? It just adds a, an earthy bitterness, if you like, that's just underneath. And it works really well with all of those spices. So a couple of tablespoons of cocoa powder. And also some chicken stock okay. leaves. There we go. And Rich, just after I add this chicken stock, you need to simmer for 20 minutes and it's done. Such a Mexican crowd blazer. Pretty much done, yeah. so let's make a oh. quick, fresh salad. Some of that Tuscan kale, right. finely shaved. Yeah. And throw me the cabbage. All right, you do that. I'll take that. Because I really enjoy something fresh and delicious and crispy inside my tortilla. Oh, which I will throw on the heat, by the yes. way. And I do love, like, raw greens with me. So we're just going to finely shave the cabbage. Now you could use a red cabbage, you could use, um, you could even use a lettuce at yeah. this point. But I really enjoy using something like the cabbage and the Corrigan's Tuscan kale at the same time because it get a lovely earthy chewiness to it. Yeah, here we go. Oh, we can smell those tortillas. They're nearly ready. Okay. So Rich, I'm just going to quickly dress, yep, throw that in there. There we go. A little bit of salt and a little bit of oil and a little bit of cider of vinegar. vinegar. And then I'm going to serve this up for you, Rich. Mm -hmm. And while you plate, I'm going to match this with a beautiful Sauvignon Blanc from Matua. We're it's, having a little tibble, aren't we? We're going to have a little tibble. It's like low calorie, it's low alcohol, and I reckon it's going to flavour match this beautifully. OK, looking forward to it. I'm adding a little bit of sour cream, Liddell's lactose-free sour cream. Just a touch. How's that? You know, this has become quite dark and luscious. And I suppose that's the combination of the tomatoes, the cocoa powder and all of those mm. spices, and of course the turkey. Wonderful. Thanks, Rich. It's a one-pot wonder, gluten-free, lactose-free, turkey con carne with a fresh Tuscan kale slaw. Cheers to that. Thanks, Rich. Rich. Where's the tractor gone? Oh, it's probably got to get someone else out of the bog. <laughs> someone else didn't come in the front gate. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what are we making? I want to do a slow-cooked lamb shoulder. Delicious. But this is a FODMAP recipe. Great. Bring it on. What do right. we do? So, we've got our lamb here. 
and we're going to use some salt for starters. And I want to get this on straight away. Like, I want to be able to render the fat off the lamb and get that cooking. That's probably the first thing I want to mm -hmm. do. Do you have your pan on? I will. So next, I'm going to use a little bit of asafoetida powder. OK. Which is an Indian fennel-like plant. Yeah, so and that's, that's an Indian. Yeah, thing. so probably if they can't have garlic and they can't have onion. So, so it has a flavour, does it? Mm, so it imparts a sort of those, like, fl onion and garlic-like flavours. A little bit Indian, a little bit Sri Lankan. And it's but only it's used It's not curry-like. In... No. It just has that oniony, garlicky type of... Yeah, yeah. Wow, and it's, and that it's does. Sort of... It smells like cut onions. Mm. Now with so, a couple of carrots? A couple of carrots, just cut in discs. And nice lengths of celery. So a little bit of Cobram Estate oil. OK, I've got my lovely lamb shoulder, which I'm going to render now. Lovely piece of sovereign lamb. So now I'm going to add some anchovy to my oil. See, a lot of people now may be thinking, is he crazy yeah. adding anchovy to the base of a slow-cooking lamb? Yeah. You're not crazy, Rich. It adds just this saltiness and it just gives those bit lamb a great base flavour. Now, this is where we get our asafoetida. So you only want a small amount of this, possibly around that much, I reckon. It even smells like it's got onion in. Yeah. Well, right, we that's when we can throw this in. We're replace things. We're just trying to enhance the flavour. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Bay leaf in there now? Yep. Chuck that in. Come in. Yep, great. So this is beautiful Otway pork bacon. Another flavour profile. It's going to be really interesting lamb. <laughs> There's always a little bit no, uncertain. No, no, I am looking forward to it, Rich. <laughs> Even I'm still not convinced by that. All right, so that can just go in. OK, let's have Rich, a little... Yep. I can smell the lamb. It let's must be a, browning out nicely. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, oh look at that. Yeah. Do you reckon we can take that out now? Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, yeah. Sweet. Beautiful. Come on, fog it up. There we are. There we go. All right. So to get all those sticky little flavours off the bottom of the pan, just going to add some vinegar. Now I'm going to add some Admona tomato puree. A okay. little bit of FODMAP for you chicken stock. Smelly beautiful, Rich. Mm. And then I'm guessing you're going to pour it over that lamb shoulder. Yeah. Here it goes, Karen. All this beautiful flavour that we've built up. Mm hmm in over the lamb shoulder. In over the lamb shoulder. Beautiful. What else goes on, Rich? Okay. A little bit of dried oregano over the top. And my surprise element, since you always add a surprise element, which throws me, I want to get a little, just a little bit of nutmeg. Because wow. I actually, well, just because it does that sort of thing about when vanilla does to a sweet, it adds a depth to it. It does, yeah. it does. It says so you're getting medieval on me. <laughs> it's actually a, quite a really old spice to put with meat. Mm. Ooh, you need ooh. to seal it. Yeah. yeah. My little contribution. <laughs> All right. So that just needs to go into the oven. There we go. For about three hours on 160. It will be beautiful. Beautiful. Where are you? I am rumbling through the Swiss chard. Where are you? What? You're dropping... Karen, you're dropping out. Come on, Rich, pick up! Where are you? I can't see you anywhere. It's just ridiculous. Hello? Rich, I've got no idea where you are, but I'm sick of the dark. <laughs> 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 I've been in the shed. I've been nearly run over by a forklift. Well, the good thing is we found each other now. The lamb's really cool. Right, Come let's on. Go. <laughs> okay, this is a very special recipe because it is egg-free and gluten-free. Well, I. My gnocchi that I make is egg-free, but yeah. I'm looking forward to tasting your gluten-free gnocchi. It took me a while to find the right flour, but I used White Wings gluten-free flour and it seemed to work perfectly. All right, so I've just put in here four potatoes. There we are. You can chop yours, take the skin off. 
Now, I didn't want to boil these, Karen, because you want the potato to be as dry as possible. Yes, yeah. I think um, everyone has their own particular method for making gnocchi. I am of the Italian train of thought. Bake the potatoes in their skins, yeah. still, yeah. like yourself, but on rock salt. Okay. And that imparts the salt flavour into the potato and sort Smart. of steams them in the skin. And they don't, they're nowhere near water, so, yeah. until they're being cooked. All right. So that's done. So this machine, it's not a machine, but this device is called... Very a, handy. ...is a ricer. And once you've used this, you will never go back to a normal masher again. It's like that. OK. There we are. That should be enough. All right, we're going to add some gluten-free flour. What's your ratio? Oh, it's, it's about, I would say... It's... It changes with it the change. potatoes, I find. Yeah. So it's sort of like an Italian nonna knows when to stop. You sort of just keep adding it until you realise, doesn't it? Don't laugh. Do you know where she is? <laughs> <laughs> All right. I reckon we can start. A little bit of olive oil. A little bit of salt. See, I've never successfully... Oh, well, I always just make it with plain flour, so this mm. is rather exciting. There we go. It's performing together. Oh, done, Rich. All done. OK, I think this needs just a little bit more flour. There we are. So, I mean, you don't want to add too much flour because you want your gnocchi to be tender and delicate and delicious, not like rubber squash balls. No, you want them to be like little soft pillows. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. OK. All right. What's next? What next? We roll it out. Now for the fun bit. For the fun bit, chop in half. A little bit of flour for you to roll on. That's for you. Feels beautiful, Rich. Yeah. Soft, silky. Yeah. How thick do you like them? I like them. Yep, that's good for me. Two logs. All right, let's chop this up. OK. You know what you're doing. I hope you are surprised by these, Karen. Yeah. A little bit of salt in the water. And let's pop some in. I'm going to get the lamb out of the oven because I know it's ready. Okay. I can smell it. All right. All right. That'll be ready. How's that look? Okay. Whoa. Whoa. That looks great, Rich. Here you go. I'll give you that for the moment. Mm. And we need to prepare a little bit of a quick salad, mm. maybe just some really finely sliced, bit of lemon and a bit of extra virgin oil and salt in a bowl. Beautiful. We had to use this beautiful rainbow chard here. I oh, know. Um, how could we not? Yeah. Hey, Rich, how long are the gnocchi? Until they start floating up to the surface. Great. I love the idea of a fresh little garnish. Okay. A little bit of olive oil. I mean, when the greens are so fresh like this, you just need... A little bit of vinegar. Ah, a little bit of vinegar, a little bit of extra virgin oil, salt and pepper, pepper. and you're done. Here we are. You can use oh, those thank two. you, thank you. All right, now it's beginning to float to the surface. Just a little longer. Now, Karen, I just want a little scatter all over the plate. And I'm going to place the gnocchi on top. Too much? Too little? No, nice. And now we can just do this. One occasionally here, and occasionally there. Rich, it's looking posh. <laughs> Gotta say. Well, look, I'm, oh, it's all about the texture for me, because that's what I loved about gnocchi. And I was very distraught that I couldn't actually have it. So you to know. find this recipe and make it, this is almost miracle gnocchi. Like, I just didn't think it was possible. Gluten-free gnocchi. All right, how's that? OK. All right, beautiful. Getting romantic there. Beautiful. So, all we've got to do is pull apart a bit of the lamb, which is beautiful. Richard, it's falling apart. It's yeah. melt-in-the-mouth lamb shoulder. It's beautiful. It's mm. very fancy played up, Rich. Oh. Some little pecorino. A little bit of pecorino. There we go. A little bit of lemon. A 
Look at that. Beautiful, Rich. We can't taste this without our FODMAP friend. Laura. Hi. How are you? Yeah, You're just good, in thank time. you. I know, it looks fantastic. Rich's slow-cooked lamb shoulder with gluten-free gnocchi. Ooh, wow. that's fantastic. It's still be succulent, it's mm. great. And FODMAP friendly. Mm. So, Laura, what is FODMAP? So FODMAPs is an acronym for a group of um, short-chain carbohydrates or sugars that are malabsorbed by people that have got IBS. Okay. So it stands for fermentable oligosaccharides, disaccharides, monosaccharides and poils. Bit of a mouthful, hence mm. we just say FODMAPs. Yeah. FODMAPs. Yeah. FODMAPs, yep. I really love the FODMAP friendly logo. Yes. When I'm looking for something that I want to buy and it's got that on, I know that it's going to be a safe product for me. That's exactly right. And that's why we created the FODMAP Friendly Food Program to begin with, was for people like you, people that have got IBS, mm. you know, one in seven people worldwide that are on a diet low in FODMAPs, to just look for that logo and know that they can eat with confidence and not have to worry about scrambling through ingredients mm. on labels and deciphering mm. things. Yeah, it's been a joy doing this and finding out new ways to cook things, given those parameters. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly it. It takes a bit of guesswork, but it doesn't have to be boring. You know what, I'm going to take a rest from Silverbeak for a while. <laughs> and, no, and no rainbow chard on the veggie list this weekend, that's for sure. <laughs>